At the 11th hour on November 11th, 1918, World War I came to an end. Some veterans in Chicago still fighting to make sure the contributions of a groundbreaking black unit are never forgotten. WGN's Gaynor Hall shares their story. At a time when the U.S. Armed Forces remained segregated, the Fighting Eighth left a lasting legacy in France, coming back home to continue the struggle for their own rights. JROTC cadets at the Chicago Military Academy in Bronzeville are surrounded by history. The setting here is special. There's a lot of history in this building. The school sits at 35th and Giles, the street named in honor of Lieutenant George Giles, who died after fighting in World War I. The building itself is a Chicago landmark, home of the first armory in the United States built for a black military regiment, the Fighting Eighth. It was such a noble struggle, and they put it all on the line. I remember in my 20s walking down this hall out there, looking in this room, and they would have meetings of the old age, and it'd be a hundred guys in here. And I was I always wonder about them, you know, what are they doing? You know, who are they? Ronald Murdoch, who served with the National Guard and the Army Reserve, is now 71 years old. And the guys he used to see meeting here are now gone. Memorial Hall in the General Jones Armory in Washington Park is a tribute to their unit. The 8th Infantry, they went over to France, 1918, and fought in World War I. But the significance of it was that when they went to the war, they were led by black officers. The 8th's roots trace back to a volunteer militia. During the Great War, the Illinois National Guard Regiment was incorporated into the 370th U.S. Infantry. But racism in America meant they had to fight under French command. At the end of the war, they were chasing the Germans. The Germans were retreating. And... Somebody forgot to tell them that the war was over. So they just kept chasing the Germans. They were brave and heroic men. They kept fighting. Yep, they kept fighting. Retired Army Colonel Eugene Scott is a former publisher of the Chicago Defender. In 2018, he traveled with his wife and several Chicago students to Vauxion, a French town the soldiers helped to liberate. The French are forever grateful of that. In fact, 71 of the soldiers from the 8th received the highest medal for bravery and heroics that the French could give. They came home to a huge parade and an ongoing battle for equality. They fresh off of winning the war in France and they come back to, to the segregated United States and now they've changed. Murdoch is the president of the 8th Infantry Association. The group is dedicated to honoring the 8th. It's just amazing that people do not know about the history of this organization. And they raise money for scholarships to benefit the next generation of leaders. If we don't preserve our history as black people, no one else will. It makes you want to kind of stick your chest out a little bit, you know, to know that you're a part of, uh, of, of, of this. The Victory Monument at 35th and King Drive lists the names of men from the 8th who died in the war. Colonel Scott says what he wants most is for black soldiers to receive the recognition they deserve. I will fight this fight to the end. For the cadets just starting out, their instructors hope they'll soak up the history in these walls. I want them to know that they can achieve anything they want to achieve. They can overcome obstacles. I hope they take the strength that the fighting they've had the commitment to community, and so forth. That's my hope. Every year on Veterans Day, there's a gathering at the Victory Monument in Bronzeville. Veterans honoring the history of the 8th, determined to make sure their story lives on. Gaynor Hall, WGN News.
And we will be sharing another inspiring story of Chicago veterans tomorrow on the WGN Evening News at 6. Then join WGN Sean Lewis for our Veterans Voices special this Saturday, Veterans Day, at 6.30 p.m.